Hi everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I would like to talk to you about what a CAL is. So um, CAL is an abbreviation and it stands for Crochet A Long. Now that doesn't tell you much more but I'm going to try and explain and show you what a CAL is. So when I first started crocheting again I quickly discovered the word cal and the concept and I have to say I am in love with a cal. I will, or if I think I have the time to do the cal, I will always do it. I love mystery cals because then you really don't know what you're making, but a normal cal you do have some sort of an idea of what you're making. So what is a cal? Now, before I start explaining, I believe that a cal is a fabulous thing because, for instance, you start making a blanket, right? You decide that you want to make this blanket, you get all your materials and you start. But it's a big project, it's like a huge mountain in front of you and you, you, know, you start working on it and you're all with, you know, energetic and you're all going really well then all of a sudden you think oh there's no progress I've been working on this for such a long time I'm on my own I feel lonely and I keep going you know and there's no progress and it's hours and hours of work and yes it is a lot of work but you get demotivated because you cannot see progress you just oh so a cal is an ingenious way of getting you to do the project without really thinking about it. So if you were to break up that huge mountain of work into smaller bite-sized pieces and you would say, right, I'll do this one this week, the next piece that week, the next one that week, you are building your project, you're building your blanket, and it's growing without you even noticing. So, back to what is a cal. A cal is something where a big project is broken up into small pieces for you to do each week. So you have, at the end, you have a completed project, and it was really a lot of work but because it was broken up in smaller pieces it was a piece of cake <laughs> so generally a cal will be a blanket or something else like I did last year I did a poncho as a cal but nobody knew what it was going to be so it was a mystery and um, you every week a part of the pattern comes out and you do that and at the end you have your whole project done. So there is a certain way, a, t a certain timeline for a cow. So first of all there is the teasing time. So that's before it all starts, you know, the designer has come up with an idea for us, for us to make and so they have decided, yeah, we've made it already of course, we've tried it out, we've written the pattern, we're going to give you some sneak peeks to, you know, sort of whet your appetite, get your attention, do you want to make this as well? Then after that comes, this is what you need and you are able to buy for instance, you're able to buy it in certain um, online wool shops, they will sell the pack, uh, depending on how well the designer uh, works with people like that or you know how it works. But um, generally for me, all you, I'll hand out is a list of what you need and then you can go out and find that yourself. And then of course, once you've got your materials, it's waiting for the date. And there'll be a particular date when the cal starts. And yeah, that's when the first part of the pattern will be released. So in fact, you will only have per week maybe 30 rows to do. 
So if your project is like 150 rows, then it's broken up quite conveniently in five parts of 30 rows. It's not that much to do. And in an ideal world, right, if you had the time to do it, you would be able to just do 30 rows, easy. You can't just be given a whole pattern of 150 rows and here, there, you do it. You lose motivation straight away. But if they hand you a pattern of 30 rows, you think, yeah, I'll do that, that's fine. I can achieve that in a week. And so it goes. So the date arrives, you get your first part of the pattern and off you go. You're enthusiastic because yes, you have an idea of what you're making, but not really. There's always some, some parts that you don't know. So the first week you either learn your stitches or you find out which colors you're making or using or whatever, right? So you do the first week and you are ready to get, of course, your second part of the pattern and then week two arrives and you get your second part. So, you know, and again, you're enthusiastic because yes, I can continue my blanket and you've got another 30 rows to do. And the way that works is just wonderful because it gives you motivation to do another 30 rows. No, you don't have to do another 100 rows that week. Just do your 30 and that's it. So I have done several cows like that. And the, the, the fun in knowing as well that you're not on your own. You know there are people out there doing that same cow, doing the same project as you are doing. So you're all in the same boat. You don't think, oh, I'm on my own. I'm you know, doing these hundreds and hundreds of rows and I can't see any progress and blah, blah, blah. No. You know that other people are also doing that, Cal. They're in the same situation. They might even be having the same problems as you, same stitches to learn, things like that. So these days, of course, for every Cal, there is also a Facebook group. And if you decide to do that particular Cal, join the group and they'll all be really enthusiastic and really looking forward to the start of it and then once it started on the day itself it's like yes 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 it's been published go and have a look in it i mean the excitement is just wonderful you know so you you feel like you're part of a group and that you're making it together now of course i'm talking about a cal with rows there's also cals where you make squares and then you put them together later on. And again, those are so much fun because you will then be given the pattern for those squares, so many squares to make. You know, the same thing again. It's an achievable amount of work for that week. And then, of course, towards the end, if you have made squares, there will be the instructions for you to put them together as well. So, yeah, whichever way you are doing a cal, um, you know, whether it be lines or squares, it's just such fun to know that you have bite-sized pieces doing them together with other people and you can communicate in the Facebook groups and, you know, ask your questions there, post your projects and things like that. Now, over the years, of course, people have, you know, designers have published um, cows. And now you might think, oh, I would love to make that blanket. So you go and you find um, that particular pattern and you see that actually it's been a cow. It was a cow maybe a couple of years ago or whatever, or last year or whatever. So it's even then, it's still nice to do that because a cow, all those patterns will stay online forever. And many of the packs are still available from some of the retailers. So even if you're late to the party, you can still do the cal. And like I said before, if you're a member of that Facebook group, there will be people who might have just started as well, um, who are still doing the original cal, because that's the thing. I am talking here about keeping up with it, but you don't have to. Like I said, in an ideal world, you will finish your section that you have to do for that week in that week. But of course, everybody knows life happens. So if you can't manage to finish that week's worth, 
don't worry, save the pattern, put it in a playlist. Um, what I tend to do is bookmark it on my computer, maybe even print it off so I have all the, you know, all the installments so that when you are ready for the next part, you have it there and you don't have to go and look for it. Of course, if you know uh, really well where to go and find it, you know, bookmark it so you can go and find it again. But yeah, I mean, cows are such a lovely thing to do because they break up a big project into smaller sized pieces and it's achievable for you and it keeps up your motivation, keeps up your energy and you tend to finish it. So, like I said, a couple of years ago when I picked up my hook again, I quickly was introduced to a cow. And of course, yes, I mean, for me at that time, I quickly figured out what it was. So, you know, you got your weekly installments. But of course, it was a complete mystery to me. I thought, I want to do this. So, this is the very first cal that I did. It was a drops cal and it was a mystery cal. So, they suggested three colorways. And I bought all three and I bought one for my mum as well. So, my mum has made this in the purple colorway. I made this one. Um, because this one turned out to be the original colorway, so the one that they used for their tutorials. And I thought to myself, it is the first time I was going to do a cal, so I thought it might be worth just doing it in whatever they are doing, then at least when they say white, use I could use also white, you know. So um, that made sense to me at the time. So it was a mystery cal. So in the beginning we were making the squares, and um, so every flower had a different name and it was really lovely because also at that time, of course, I had done basic crocheting, but I'd never made flowers like this, nor had I made them in square. So it was really, really nice. So every week I was really looking forward to the patterns. I was really going for it and sort of, you know, really, really in the evenings, um, keeping myself busy with um, the making the squares and everything so I had a really nice time then it turned out that in fact yes it was going to be a blanket only it's not a very big blanket um, I don't think it's even you know it's, it's like a baby blanket um, but I learned so much um, not only about, of course, um, you know, all the stitches and things like that, um, about the flowers, about the squares, about using cotton, because I hadn't used cotton um, by then. I hadn't used cotton very often. Um, but also I learned about what a cow is and what fun a, can, a cow could be. Now, when I did this and they suggested, you know, three colorways, I did buy those colorways and I did trust the designer about which colors would look good together. So they had a, the designer has a particular idea in their head and that's why they suggest those particular colors to you. You don't really know what you're making. Even if you have seen the sneak peeks and then you've got some time to buy your wool and then there's a starting date, that time period still doesn't give you enough time to actually come up with a different colorway or come up with you know, your own colorway because of course you don't have the knowledge um, of what the blanket is actually going to look like because the the designer hasn't given you all the details. So with a cal, I always trust the designer. I buy the suggested colorway and I make it in that. If I like the pattern really, really much and I think, yes, I'll do that again, but I want it for this room and I want it in that colour scheme, then you can afterwards do an, a second one, I think, and do it in your colour scheme. But I think you really, really need to trust the designer and use the colours that they are that they are suggesting. So there we go. So that's what I always do. I try to use the colours as suggested. Then I think um, the next cal I did was this one here. 
Um, this one again had also uh, three colorways, uh, suggested three colorways. I chose the blue one. My mum chose sort of the, the dark gray and red one they had as well. Uh, she didn't end up making it because she didn't like um, chain. So every week it was a different stitch and my mum didn't want to do that. She just said, oh no, I just want to stick to one stitch of it. Um, and I think she made it in the end, she made it in this one. So she just did the block stitch and she kept doing that. But for me, this was a really nice cowl to do because it was uh, sections of different stitches. And as you know, that is exactly what I like so much because I've used it in my own cowls as well. And you learn so much, you learn the new stitch and then you can keep on going. Um, for so many rows until you finished that section. So that was a, a nice way to break up the um, You know the blanket and of course to break it up into weeks of what you had to do So here we had to make lines and of course we had to do squares as well So that was a, a nice cowl to do and then my friend said, oh, have you heard? There's a cowl, you know, Attic 24, the moorland. And yeah, that was my first Attic 24 blanket. And I have to say, I was hooked straight away. So here we go. Uh, this was the moorland. I bought the pack. I really, really love the colors. And it's built up like a picture. So you have the sky. Then the moors, the colours for the moors, and then below you have all the greens and the browns sort of for the earth and the grass. So when you look at it from afar, it sort of looks like a view onto the moors with the purple heather. And um, like I said, yes, this is a Attic 24. You can still buy this uh, pack. And um, that uh, colorway, the colorway and the stitch and when uh, which colors to use is still on her uh, website. So you can just go and download that or look at it up, up on there. Um, so yes, like I said, a cal, it's lovely to do it in real time. But of course, if you see a picture and it turns out that it was a cal from last year or whatever, all the patterns stay available even if the packs are no longer available there will be a list of the colors that you need so you can just put them together yourself and do it yourself so you know in a way it's it's never too late it's never too late to do a cal <laughs> have you ever done a cal before leave me a comment and tell me all about it so when I first started crocheting again, I saw this blanket here in the shop window of a wool shop. And I was not confident enough then to actually make it. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's such a lovely blanket. I want to make that one day, but not just yet, because I don't think my skills are up to it. Then it turned out that in fact it had been a cow only months before that when I first saw it. One of my friends now noticed it a couple, uh, two years ago, I think, and she said, oh, I would really like to make the lily pond. And of course, yes, I wanted to make that as well. And I thought, do you know what? I think I'm ready for it now, okay? So I knew it was a cal. So I went online and uh, got the pattern, downloaded it from the website, got it all bound and everything, you know, sort of, and it, in fact, it's, it's worked out week one, this, week two, this, week three, this. So my friend and I got together, I got the original colorway, she got the cherry um, blossom colorway, because in the meantime, there was a second colorway for it, and she liked that one better. And we met up, I think it was the 1st of August that day, we met up, sat in a tea shop, we started with these ones, with the bubbles. I remember doing the bubbles. So I did four lots of bubbles because there's four lots like this that we had to get started with. And we sat there all afternoon doing these first sections. That was week one. And we said to each other, right, okay, you know, when it was time to go home, we'll do week one. And on this date, we'll start week two. Yeah, that's fine, okay. So I saw her the next week and indeed the date had passed and we both started week two. So we were on, on there, you know, we were keeping each other going. Then she was going on holiday and I said, right, okay, during your holiday and I will do this as well. So this was like the third week of August. We'll do week three and four, whatever, you know, whatever it was. 
And so we were egging each other on and keeping going. And you know what? We finished it 31st of August. I was putting it together like the 29th of August, 30th of August. I was um, sewing my bits together, crocheting my bits together and doing... I did do the the border differently, I think. I just got... I, I wanted it finished. <laughs> but yeah, so we did it together. We kept each other going. We kept on sending messages to each other. I finished this one. How are you doing? She, she was like, you know, messaging back saying, yeah, I finished that one. And actually she went on holiday uh, to a warm country and she said, never again, I'm taking acrylic because it's so hot in your hands. <laughs> but she kept on going. She kept on working on it. And yeah, so we did it together. So we did the cal, the two of us, we just set our minds to it and we did it. And I think that's the beauty of it. If you find someone who wants to do the same one, you know, talk them into doing it because it's really worth doing that. And look, I've made this blanket, you know, really, really quickly. Now, there's another one as well that we made. Um, this one here is the Sunshine and Showers blanket. And um, I mean, all these names, if you just type them into Pinterest or wherever, you'll find who the designers are and things like that. So they're easy to find or, you know, Pinterest or even just Google. Um, this one we did in the crochet club. So every week I gave them a part of the pattern. We bought all the wool to start with. And yeah, we did it. We did it all together. So lots of us made this blanket. We had such a good time. But like with this one, and this one here, you are doing different things every week. So this one here, hang on, let me just show you. You know, the, the bits are really different. So here we were making bubbles, here we were making, you know, this kind of design in our um, crochet, here we were doing waves, here we had the hearts. So yeah, so every week we had to learn quite a few new techniques to complete the parts. So yes, I mean, at this moment in time, I like doing cows that turn off my mind, that I can just relax and I don't need to think about it. A cow like this means that every week or for every row nearly, you are reading instructions. I mean, it's wonderful, you know, I would not have not wanted to do it, of course. It's a beautiful blanket. But the type of cows that I like now are these ones here. You know, the Attic 24, where the first week you learn a new stitch and you use that stitch throughout your blanket. Okay, that might seem boring, but the thing then is every week she gives you the colors. So you have no idea of the color order. And so that then is your surprise. So once you know your stitch, off you go, you feel much more confident and then each week you just wait for the order of the colors that you are going to be using. So this one here is the Sweet Pea. And so um, the first week we learn the stitch and then you get your color order and then so on it goes. So she tells you each week what colors to use. Of course, this one was announced and I was like, yes, yes, I'm going to do that. So I got the pack and everything and I was ready. And um, generally she, um, Lucy releases a cal in January. So yeah, I was ready for it. I was doing it. And then of course, she released the color wash of this one. So where you go through the colors, color by color, so you don't have them, you know, mixed up, but you have them, you know, like this all going through the colorway. So yeah, so I started a second blanket. I ordered a second pack and I started a second blanket because I wanted to do that as well. So I quickly caught up and uh, <laughs> as you do. And uh, yeah, I ended up, you know, doing two blankets instead of just the one. So yeah, I mean, like I said, cows are great fun. I really enjoy them. For me, I manage to keep up with the cows or I make myself keep up with the cows. Of course, like I said, not everybody has that amount of time. Uh, and if you fall behind, don't worry, because obviously all the patterns stay there online. Um, you can still go 
to next week's pattern or to the pattern, you know, wherever you um, finished. Uh, of course, make sure you bookmark them or keep them so you have them there ready for you to use. But like I said, the way you know, who came up with this, okay? Of course, I can imagine who came up with it, right? The yarn producers, because it's a great way to sell packs of yarn and then designers come up with a pattern and you are making it. But who cares? I mean, what a lovely way of doing our hobby. Bite-sized pieces every week, something to look forward to. You buy your pack in advance, you've got everything that you need. Like I said, you know, every week there's another episode of your pattern and you do it and you have great fun and you have a direction, you know, you have something to look forward to, you have something to look, uh, to work towards as well. Like I've got to finish my 30 rows by next week and you know, you're sort of, it's achievable. So yeah, I enjoy cows very, very much. I hope that this video, I have to close it now because I'm covered in all these blankets. I'm getting really warm. <laughs> um, I hope this video has helped you with, um, you know, what a cow is, how to go about it. Um, you know, what if you fall behind? Uh, Cal, how do cows work? So I hope I've answered all your questions and I hope that you will be doing my cow that's coming up really soon. If you know someone who would like to find out what a cow is, don't hesitate and share this video with them. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! If you've enjoyed this video, please do consider sharing it with others. Thank you so very much for watching and I also hope to see you on our Facebook group. Join me there!